Hi, this is Keena Kim with PivotalDiscovery.com. I'm here with Lynn Mestel, President of Higher Council, and she's going to share some of her thoughts on the role of outside counsel and e-discovery. Thank you. Um, I've been asked the question of what is the role of outside counsel on a large e-discovery project. And as the president and founder of um, one of the, I think we're the largest privately held national provider of temporary attorneys and uh, review management for electronic discovery, I think uh, um, we're sort of in a unique position to see how outside counsel um, has, have handled e-discovery and what were the client expectations. The most important thing I think that, that everybody has to keep in mind is whose malpractice is going to cover if there is any mistake made on a e-discovery project. A staffing firm or a provider of um, contract services is not a law firm. We can't get malpractice insurance. In fact, if we were to practice law, we'd go to jail. It's a felony. Software solution providers, the people who you know, uh, collect the data and the people who then tee up the data um, on software so that contract attorneys or attorneys can be looking at this data are also not um, law firms, and they clearly don't have malpractice insurance. So really, what happens on every e-discovery project? The projects have to be set up physically. The IT has to be put in physically. The uh, whatever materials that are going to be looked at have to be, you know, sort of teed up onto a piece of software. Contract attorneys have to be briefed on this, or contract attorneys have to be taught or retaught or refreshed, if you will, of how to use that specific piece of software to do this review. And then finally, it's for the law firm, the outside counsel, to be briefing each contract attorney on the substantive nature of the case so that they really understand what it is that they're looking for. Now clearly the briefing of that should be done by the counsel. It's their case. Right. During the e-discovery, when people start to work, there's always a series of questions on what's proper etiquette, where do you sign in, where do you sign out, what kind of lunch breaks you're going to take, um, what type of vacation policies there are, things like that. Uh, you don't like the guy next to you because they're streaming videos. Um, you know, just normal HR questions and issues, proper procedure. And all of that is handled by us or by the agency that is providing these CAs. That's our job. At every review, questions come up, substantive questions come up, and those substantive questions then have to be asked to someone. The question is, okay, if on site, who is there, who is there going to be on site to take in these substantive questions, okay, and then who's going to be answering them? And this is where I think sort of the rubber meets the road. Do we have one of our CAs, you know, a supervisor type, type take in those questions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have one of our own employees who's a lawyer take in those questions? Okay. Or do we get those questions directly to the outside counsel because those are substantive questions? the answers of which okay, can only be covered by malpractice insurance. Right. We can't practice law without a license. 
It's our possession, okay, that the designated person who's receiving those questions has to be covered by malpractice insurance. Because if they uh, aren't, and then they misinterpret the question or give funnel back a wrong answer, that is the moment in time when you can have a real big problem. There have been no cases on this yet. You know, thank goodness nothing bad has happened yet. Mm -hmm. But as long as that procedure, you know, uh, is, is as long as the person who, who is in that spot is, a, is, is an attorney who's covered by malpractice insurance, I think everybody is fine. Where we see the, the, the lines, if you were bl blurring, is in a one-stop shopping where uh, companies seem to be offering up that person as well. Mm -hmm. Sort of the, the, the supervisor on site who is going to be handling the substantive questions. And it's our position that for not a lot of money, um, the risk is so great that we believe that outside counsel should always be the one who's handling those questions. Great. Thanks. And that's what I wanted to say, and I appreciate the opportunity to be able to say it. Great. Thanks very much, Lynn, for, for joining us today. Okay. Appreciate it.